There is a large number of Madridistas that seem to be of the opinion that 18-year-old midfielder Nico Paz needs to be promoted to the first team immediately. Following the under-20 Suda Americano, where he quite simply attempted to put his underperforming Argentinian under-20 side on his back, he has been able to continue his scorching hot form, becoming a crucial contributor to a Castilla side chasing promotion, all while steadily earning a reputation as the jewel of La Fabrica. After all, there's a lot to like about a 6 foot one silky smooth left-footed playmaker. However, there's one major problem. Despite Real Madrid having one of the most famed academies in football, they have not successfully promoted and integrated an academy talent into their first team in eight seasons. But right now, after rising to brilliance in these past seasons and showing astronomical development day after day, he, out of all the Madrid players in La Fabrica, seems to be the most likely to finally break the curse. So this now leaves us with the real question. Will Nico Paz finally break the streak of underwhelming Fabrica graduates, or will he succumb to the same fate as others before him, either falling into obscurity or being sold like the rest? Now, considering the funds and the squad that Real Madrid have at their disposal, it's hard to imagine that this Argentinian will finally be the one that forces his way into the first team. But at the end of the day, what do people say? Talent is undeniable. With his father Pablo being a former center back for La Alba Celeste, you could say football runs through the family. As a nine-year-old, his father would take up a job as a youth coach for Tenerife, bringing young Nico along with him. And for the other coaches at Tenerife, it was realized on day one that this boy wasn't just a coach's son. After seeing him play twice, youth coach Luis Rodriguez swore to his friends that I was coaching a future Ballon d'Or winner. Of course, Tenerife was never going to hold on to this prodigy for long. Madrid came calling, and everyone knows that the only answer any family is giving to that phone call is yes. Fast forward to 2021, and Paz would have become the superstar from Madrid's Juvenile Seaside before Juvenile A would call him up for the final few match days, giving the young prodigy a couple of appearances for the U19 side as a 16 year old. In the following season, Madrid would make the decision to move him to the Juvenile B side rather than the Juvenile A, but he wouldn't be there for long. Nine games into the season, Paz would have already netted seven goals from the midfield and would be sent straight back to the Juvenile A team, now as a starter. Raul would also call him to Castilla on various occasions, and Scaloni would even call him up to train with the Argentinian national team. Now, this season, he would continue to play primarily with Juvenile A, but would quickly show that he was simply too good for the U19 level. Opposition just stood no chance against him, and in the UEFA Youth League, it was just domination. Five goals in five matches, including the greatest youth league performance ever in a 3-2 win versus Leipzig. A game in which he would not just score two, but create two big chances, complete 14 out of 14 dribbles, win 21 duels, and get onto seven tackles to finish out a legendary performance. What's even crazier is that the 14 dribbles weren't just a one-off thing. He averaged 11 successful dribbles per 90 minutes. For reference, Messi only managed 6 per game during his immortal 10-11 campaign, and Paz also averaged 6 tackles to go along with it. It was a breathtaking campaign that would earn him a starting spot for Castilla, but also a spot on Argentina's provisional 48-man World Cup squad, and also a lock for the U-20 Sudamericano at 18. Now, heading into the January competition, he didn't have expectations. Sure, he had a phenomenal youth league campaign, but he would be alongside players such as Maximo Perón, Mateo Sole, and Luca Romero, teens that would soon be playing first-team football at top top European clubs. They were the players that were expected to lead this youth side to glory, but instead, by the end of the group stage, Argentina were second to last out of the tournament and only having a single win to their name. No one had performed, not Sole, not Romero, not anyone. Not anyone except Nico Paz. Somehow, he had performed at a cut above any of his teammates. His 1v11 second half performance versus Brazil was magical. He would navigate through area after area and then dish out phenomenal pass after phenomenal pass. He was Argentina's only player, but by the end of the game, they would still lose 3-1, to one, Paz getting a consolation assist. Still, he had come on in the second half, yet somehow led the team in dribbles, shots, balls won, and would create more chances in one half than the rest of the team combined in the total 
single game. By the end of the tournament, he had somehow led the group stage in chances created, despite the side only scoring three goals. Yet still, Lauba Celeste would exit the tournament empty-handed. Nonetheless, it was still another magical tournament for Nico, and when he returned to Madrid, Ancelotti would have his eyes on him and Raul would give him the keys to Castilla. And so far in his 10 Castilla games, he has scored and assisted four as a midfielder, but really, his ability lies far, far beyond his goals and assists. From what I've said, you can surely recognize that Pies is an artist on the ball. His ability to move when the ball is at his or near his feet is just silky smooth. As a tall midfielder, he's able to use his body to get in between the defender and the ball to help receive it comfortably and get an edge on the defensive player. And in general, he's able to use his body very elegantly. That's not even crediting his technical ability to weave through defenders in tight spaces. Just like the best midfielders on the planet, Paz's footwork with three or four defenders around him is exceptional. He's able to win it back, then dance through the opponents like they're not even there, and before you know it, he's gone and created another chance. Though on the other hand, he isn't quite the player that can burst off of a counterattack and cover 30-40 meters of ground. Despite having elite balance and agility, his actual acceleration and pace is nothing special. Now in turn, this limits his ability to be an effective inverted winger such as Vinny or Rodrigo as he simply lacks the explosiveness to sprint down the wings or cut in and charge into the penalty area. Think of a player like James Rodriguez, a player that never had the pace, yet was still a world beater from the wings. Both of them are 10s who occupy the advanced playmaker role, heavily relying on their IQ, technical ability, and craftiness over raw speed to break lines, score goals, and playmate. On that, he's simply a natural playmaker. His vision is amazing and he keeps his head up whenever he can. Had a ball recovery, he's able to pick out runners while the defense is still in scramble. And in general, he creates chances left and right. From short range to long range, he can play those beautiful balls that just no one else can spot. Now, as we mentioned, Paz has scored five goals in five UEFA Youth League group stage matches. And goal scoring slash finding shots is really another skill he possesses. His game IQ is really just off the charts and he can read the situation to determine when he should make the hidden late run into the box. Most of his goals come from these situations, but every once in a while, he can unleash a dangerous outside of the box left footed strike if you give him enough space. I mean, this kid's a gem. In Castilla, he's going to become the star of the team soon enough if Madrid don't promote him to the senior side. But just like every other player to come through La Fabrica, there is a catch. Remember what I said at the beginning of the video? Madrid are just always too good, and youth players are built out of bad situations. Unlike their La Liga rivals, Barcelona, who are more encouraging to academy players and also seem to find holes in their team to fill, Real Madrid are consistently a flawless team. Nico is also a midfielder, and if anything, out of all positions, Madrid are the most stacked in the midfield. From being days away from signing Bellingham, to having Schwameni, Valverde, Sabeos, Camavinga, and still having their backbone of Modric and Cruz, they have six or seven world beaters. An opening spot appearing for Paz is as unlikely as it gets. Further, considering his main in-game weakness is his lack of defensive aggression, it results in his best positions being as an attacking midfielder or as a wide midfielder rather than a central midfielder, meaning it would be even harder to break in as Real Madrid don't use either of those positions. James got phased out of a Real Madrid side that spent a modern 140 million euros on him only three years prior, for the simple fact that he played in positions that Real Madrid no longer used. Unless Modric and Cruz have a massive fall off next season, meaning a potential change in playstyle, the hopes of seeing him in the first team are not too ideal. On the brighter side, while the Jude Bellingham transfer does give him an even harder chance of breaking in, it also poses a huge opportunity. Back in January, Borussia Dortmund were heavily linked to Paz, but after all that's happened in the following months, a good guess as to why we haven't heard anything further is likely due to Paz's valuation reputation skyrocketing. But now that Dortmund and Madrid are about 30 million euros off in their valuation for Jude, the potential throw-in of Nico Paz to Dortmund to cover the 30 million difference could be a possibility. It's a win for everyone involved. Being in Dortmund a team of lower caliber than Madrid, but also a strong team with a reputation for developing wonder kids will result in rapid development. Everyone knows he's talented, so an opportunity with Borussia Dortmund would allow him to showcase to the world just how special he is. But he's not quite as exceptional as Lamine Yamal, the record-breaking 15-year-old. If you have not watched my video on Lamine, make sure to check it out now. You won't regret it, trust me. I'll see you then.